but many of us, many of us here, magic is a hobby. For some of us, it's even a profession. For me, I actually see it as a form of art, where I can draw, say, an imaginary coin in the air and turn imaginary into reality. Well, amazingly, if you think, if you can do this with one coin, why not try it again? You draw a second coin and just turn that into reality as well. And I know what you're thinking, if you can do it once, maybe do it twice. Certainly the best thing to do is to do it at least one more time and just do a little coin just there and you get three coins. Now, when you learn some magic, you start to think, what can you do with coins other than producing them? And I learned an amazing trick where you kind of make the coins vanish. For instance, if I take the first coin, all I need to do is just give it a little rub and a little blow and it can fade away. We'll try the same again with a second coin. I just take it, just give us a little rub and it too can vanish. The third coin is slightly a bit more interestingly. I'm going to take the coin and place it into my hand. You can watch it carefully as it vanishes. Some people think it's over here. It's completely... Did you see it go to my mouth? Try and keep track. If I watch that coin very carefully, I can even take it and vanish it back to the mouth. Now, interestingly enough, magicians can do lots of clever things called sleight of hand. For instance, we can take a coin like this and place it into our pocket, but with a little click, it can appear back in the hand. I can do the same again. It goes into the pocket, but then a little flick, and it can appear back in the hand. One more time, watch as I take that coin, place it into my pocket, but this time, the coin's a little bit different because it's a giant coin. In fact, it's a nice big solid coin. But when you get big coins like this, you can't really spend them. What you really want are 20 pound notes.